This Raw Vision video is brought to you by Metro Solar, proud partner of the Richmond Football Club. It's a brilliant thing for football in Victoria. It's a brilliant thing for the AFL and the Tigers are in the finals. The Tiger Army are out in full force. They've had great crowds this year. They're locked away in the eight and their inspirational skipper, and that's how we threw to the break before inspirational skipper Trent Cotchin uh, joins us and it uh, feels like that's a fitting way to describe you, Trent. You've had a great year and... You've led your side into the finals for a third year in a row. Yeah, I don't know about inspirational, but uh, I'd like to think a role player. <laughs> yeah, and get the best out of uh, my teammates. That's ultimately my goal as captain. Do you, do you love hearing that, though, Koch? Because it, it's true. I know you're only a young leader, but there were you know, question marks, and I think you and Murphy, two big clubs in Melbourne, always under pressure as, as captains. But this year, big moments, uh, the big stage, you've stood up and, and played big quarters, and, that, and that's what good captains, inspirational captains do. Yeah, I suppose it's nice to have positive uh, feedback coming my way from outsider sources but I suppose the number one thing is that you want your teammates to love you and, uh, and hopefully uh, they all speak pretty positively of me. Who helps you in that leadership role at Richmond? Yeah I think, I think the great thing about uh, our group now is that our leaders have matured and we've been together for a few years now um, but along, alongside from that we've uh, added um, Jared Murphy, who mm. uh, is a leadership coordinator, I suppose, and, and does a lot of work with the coaches and, and the players as well. Um, and, and then outside uh, people, I still have a relationship with Simon Kadic, given that he's up at GWS now. It's a little bit more difficult, but um, I think it's about taking little bits from, from each and every person and, and the opportunities to meet other captains is, is another great learning tool. There's a little bit of anger in your game, though, now, which I've never seen before. I mean, before games, there's a little bit of niggle, and it's not dirty stuff. You know, you, know, you haven't been reported or anything like that, but you, you know, just sort of you know, rubbing people's heads in and just sort of saying, I'm about, and there was a little bit with Luke Hodge and... I mean, is, have you noticed and has that been a deliberate thing or you just think that's happened naturally over the course of the year? Yeah, I'm not sure um, if too much has changed, but I suppose it's just, you know, you find what works for you. Um, I feel well, it's worked. the physicality in my game is probably uh, what needs to be a strength. Uh, and I think the feedback you get from your teammates is that they love it um, and, and they thrive on seeing, you know, your leaders standing up and, and being physical because it, it demands it of them as well. Did they give you that feedback? You spoke about Jared Murphy, who's uh, leading teams as a well-known uh, leadership uh, brand, and that was, that's his history. Did, did your teammates tell you that that's what they wanted more out of you, more aggression? Yeah, I, I suppose I naturally I play a contested game and a physical game, but if you can take opportunities where you not, not hurt opposition, but you know, make them earn a, a kick or, or a handball, or even when you're winning the footy, you know, they, they come off second best, it, it's always a real positive result. But, um, yeah, no, no super focus or... Um, <laughs> specific information from my teammates. One of, the, one of the, um, the great stories at Tigerland this year has really been the transformation of Tyrone Vickery. Now, he, he's been a long time in the making, but he's probably now playing the best football of his career. Would I be right in saying that? Yeah, I think, I think the, the great thing for Ty is his consistency. I mean, he's kicked 12 or 13 goals in the last three weeks, but I think from there, his contest work throughout mm. this season. I know he had a slower start, uh, was in and out of the team initially, but uh, since being back and, and knowing exactly what works for him, you know, those four-quarter performances, what we've been searching for him, we felt he, he floated in and out of games. But, um, yeah, I, I certainly agree that it's been his most consistent and, and impressive year. I think Jack's played a big part in that because Jack's got up the ground, he's created space for him, and uh, I think Jack's been so unselfish. Certainly a different year by Jack. Kicked his goals, but has set up a lot. Yeah, yeah, it cer certainly has been a different year for Jack. And, I mean, the rewards are that his teammates around him that he's spent yep. a lot of time with over the last couple of years develop them, developing them... Um, are getting reward with kicking goals and I think that's the great thing about football is that you know as long as you're kicking the biggest score at the end of the day and it doesn't matter who's kicking them um, you get the four points and, and that's the most rewarding thing as a team. So your players coming to AFL football now coach you from uh, America we had a debutante from Canada from all different backgrounds old-fashioned way for you you were just a junior star what I have a look at the, uh, <laughs> the CV of this man as a junior he was an out-and-out -out, uh, champion uh, from right from the various young age and this is his first game of, uh, of AFL football where he came straight into, uh, into it and looked like he was a ready-made player. And when you go back and take a look, you grew up in, in West Preston and won the best and fairest uh, basically every year. Uh, Duck, yep. uh, Captain Victoria right from the start. Let's go through it. So best and fairest at Junior Club West Preston, 99 01 04 05. Vic Metro, Captain All-Australian, Captain Vic Metro, Captain again in the under-18s. It was pretty easy for it at junior <laughs> level, wasn't it? Not bad at getting the information, oh, eh? Well, you guys, dig up... Uh, yeah, I, I suppose... 
I mean, I've always loved the game. I, I started playing footy when I was four and a half, so um, I'm probably not far off uh, being done with the body, but no, I'm just joking. Tell um, me, when, when, when you walk in like that, and clearly a star, and most players, they, they haven't got a CV like that, but most players come from a club or, or their junior clubs that they've been a pretty good player, and then you walk in and you're playing with guys like Matty Richardson. I mean, do, all of a sudden do you have some self-doubt, even though you've been such a star in junior footy? Yeah, definitely. And I think being drafted uh, in the top few picks uh, coming in, I was injured and, and wasn't able to actually play footy until, you know, round eight or nine of that, that year. So uh, you want to prove yourself. You're, you're walking into the change rooms every day, as you said, with the likes of Matty Richardson, Kane Johnson, Nathan Brown, and um, you just want to prove yourself. And I, I reckon you do have a, an element of uh, self-doubt initially, especially when your body's failing you. But... Uh, I think those guys are the, the real important factors in making people feel welcome and getting the best out of them quickly. You've beaten Fremantle, you've beaten Hawthorne, you've beaten the Sydney Swans, but you're not going to finish in the top four. Can you win the flag from the bottom part of the eight? I think uh, at the top of your show you spoke about uh, how it's so even um, this year and you know you only have to look at this week's game and, and can have a real uh, difference in where people are playing and so forth over the next couple of weeks. So I certainly don't doubt that we can um, threaten against other teams uh, in the top four and the bottom four of the eight. But uh, the challenge for us is to, to remain positive, stick to the plan, stick to the process as we've been uh, doing throughout the year. Given that, given that, Trent, you just said it, you, the players know where they're at. You're the captain, you're, the smart, you're a smart guy. You know that if you beat North Melbourne on Friday night, more than likely you'll be playing Adelaide in Adelaide. Is that something that's discussed amongst the players when you're having a, a green tea in the middle of the day? <laughs> green tea? Uh, I suppose there's, there's dribs and drabs of it um, throughout the year, really. Uh, you're always talking about scenarios and so forth, but the reality is that we need to come out and play four quarters of really good footy against Kangaroos and, and the balls in our court. Chris Sharon's been linked to your club, uh, Kochi. A lot of people think that that is over the line. Uh, concern about his, his, his uh, health at the moment in terms of the way he's playing. Uh, is that a worry for you? He's, he's not in great form and it doesn't look as though he's, he's all that happy at the moment. Is that a concern for you about bringing someone into your club in that state? Look, uh, to be honest with you, I'm not sure whether he's you know, going to be at the Tigers next year or not. Whatever club he does decide to go to or if he remains at Carlton, I think it's just about that environment change. They've got a new coach there. Whether he changes clubs, it's... It's just refreshing for him and that, that's what it seems to me is, um, you know, you, you need something to chase and, and something new and, and to refresh and your energy. Uh, I mean, clubs at times, especially losing games of footy, aren't uh, really great places to be. What about Stevie J, the possibility of recruiting him if uh, he falls out at Geelong? Well, I suppose he's a talented player and has been uh, doing it for a number of years. A again, it's, it's probably out of my control. If it was to come apparent, uh, it'd be a conversation with... Yeah, probably our leadership group further down the track. Trent, uh, we appreciate your time tonight. Uh, you had the week off, but uh, you're 100% back uh, this week? Yeah, I'll be playing uh, against North on Friday night. Inspirational captain is a very comfortable tag to have alongside the, the man we're sitting alongside. We appreciate your time. Trent Cochin, the captain of the time.